Hey there, it's Jeff from Hot Tub Owner HQ. And unless you're brand new to my channel, you know that I already own a full-sized regular hot tub, a traditional hard-sided, what they call portable hot tub. I don't have a need really for an inflatable hot tub. However, I talk a lot about hot tubs and I write a lot of articles about inflatable hot tubs and I decided it was high time for me to actually put my hands on one and get some real experience with an inflatable hot tub so I really knew what I was talking about. So I researched and figured out that the best brand of inflatable hot tub is definitely Intex. They're well known for their above ground pools as well and I have one of those but they seem to be the best in the market place for inflatable hot tubs better than Coleman or Best Spa or whatever that one's called. They definitely are the best. I'm going to link to this same exact one down below in the description on Amazon. That's where I got mine. But today in this video, you're going to see com the complete setup from unboxing this thing to getting it set up into my yard, filling it up, putting the filters in, adjusting the chemicals, and then we're going to also see how long it takes to heat up. Right now it's winter time here in Central Texas, and while it's not frigid, it is getting down into the 30s at night. So we want to see not only how long does it take to heat up, but does it stay at a consistent heat when the temperatures drop below 40? We're going to see all that and more in this video, so let's get going. So the first step in getting the inflatable hot tub set up is to put down the ground cloth, which protects the underside from rocks and other things that might puncture it. And what I'm noticing here is it's kind of like a thin tarp, essentially with a layer of bubble wrap on here. So not especially, it's not thick or really super resilient. I do have some small rocks on the ground where I intended to put this. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of prep work on my ground first, I think, before I put this down. I don't want anything poking through this and potentially puncturing the hot tub or just if you're sitting in it, like feeling those rocks and bumps on the bottom, which don't feel good. So let me prep that ground now. I'm going to show you that, but in fast forward time. So now the next step, of course, as you see, is I want to just kind of spread out this ground cloth and make sure that the area I excavated is big enough for it. But I also kind of want to feel around, make sure that there aren't any like big rocks that I feel underneath it. So I'm kind of feeling for that as I'm spreading it out. Seems okay with a few exceptions here. And I'm definitely noticing that this ground cloth is pretty thin. It's definitely not designed to protect your inflatable hot tub from any large amount of sharp rocks or anything like that that's underneath. Ideally, you'd put it on a concrete patio or something like that. But I do think this is going to work. I just need to make sure that all of these pesky little rocks out, some of them are very small, and I can still feel them quite a bit. And as you see here, of course, the ground cloth is easily blown in the wind. So once I'm done with this process, I'm going to put some bigger rocks down just to kind of hold it in place while I get the hot tub set up. Okay, so we're continuing the unboxing now. What we've got here looks to be a carrying case. I'm assuming just for the uh, inflatable part itself. Uh, I may or may not use that. I'm not sure. I'm going to set that aside. This is a heavy-duty insulated cover, obviously, that goes on top of the hot tub just to kind of help hold the water temperature. As we know, inflatable hot tubs are not quite as good as regular hot tubs in terms of being energy efficient and well insulated. These look to be filters or suction. Um, there's some test strips in here, so maybe this actually comes with the initial set of chemicals. I'm gonna set those aside. Right now, we mostly just need to get the thing set up. We've got some headrests here. I've not actually found a set of instructions yet, but being the good guy that I am, I rarely follow instructions. This is obviously the control panel, and it looks like it goes right here in the kind of pump and heater assembly here. I'm gonna take that whole thing out of the box next, and we'll just set that aside for right now. Again, the next step is gonna be to get the inflatable hot tub out itself. Now, here it does look like an instruction manual here. 
The very last thing to come out of that box, of course, is the hot tub itself. If you notice here, it says no box knives. So what I'm going to do is just kind of gently score the sides. I'm not going to slice down the center because I don't want to puncture my brand new inflatable hot tub, obviously. And I'm just going to kind of pry it back with my hands. Not very hard at all. And they do actually have a protective piece of cardboard on top there, just in case you were to slice down the middle. And the hot tub itself is right inside here, a little heavy, probably 40, 50 pounds, I would guess. And we're going to take it right out of the box. Okay, the, so the first step that it mentioned was to take this control panel and just simply place it in the control base and that charges a battery in here that enables you to later just have that on the side of the hot tub itself i don't know how it charges because there's nothing that it connects to so it must be doing it magnetically kind of like those cell phone chargers where you just lay your phone on a base and it charges automatically so i'm going to let that charge and now move on to actually setting up the hot tub itself Okay, so now we're going to unfold the hot tub itself. It did say to make sure and face the drain away from uh, or toward in the area where you want to drain it from. I'm not too concerned about that. I use a submersible pump to drain my regular hot tub, and I'm sure I'll use the same thing to drain this thing. So I'm just going to kind of carefully unfold it. I'm noticing that it's very thick. It's very heavy. It doesn't feel lightweight or flimsy at all very takes in fact it takes a little bit of effort just to get it unfolded as you can kind of see here i'm going to kind of just spread it around and then i'm going to see if i can locate that drain i am going to point it away from the equipment just for the sake of doing that but like i mentioned with a submersible pump you can drain any hot tub in under 15 minutes it's definitely the way to go that's what i use they're about a hundred bucks on amazon I'll link to the one that I own down below in the description as well, just in case you're interested. Otherwise, when you hook a hose up to a hot tub, it can take sometimes up to two hours to drain completely. All right, the next step before we inflate the hot tub, we have to lift this cover up. We've got a latch right here. See this metal piece there? We're gonna pull from underneath and open that. We're gonna flip that lid back. The hot tub comes with this hose kind of this adapter and the top of this there's a groove on this side that's going to go on the outside like that we're just going to fit it down in there and then we're going to put that back in place just like that and this is going to allow us to inflate the hot tub and then later we'll reconnect this for the water circulation okay so now we're ready to inflate the hot tub if you notice there's a series of kind of tube attachments or valves here. I've got this positioned very close to the heating and equipment piece. I'm going to turn this cap all the way to the left, pull it down, and then the other end of that hose that we just attached is going to go right in here, and I'm just going to turn it to the right to lock it into place. Now, as you can see, it's connected. All right, now we're back looking down at the control panel again. I have had this thing charging as was recommended for probably 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know that it's fully charged yet. It's probably not, but it should work by pressing this button to start the inflation process. I'm also noticing that it defaulted to Celsius. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to Fahrenheit if that's what that button does. I may need to press the power button first, even though the display is illuminated. Let's try that. All right, that seemed to work. I'm gonna switch this to Fahrenheit and I'm gonna press this button to start the inflation. Okay, so a couple of things to note. The instructions said to fill it for about eight to 10 minutes until it was firm but not hard. It's got a little bit of give here, but as you can see, it's pretty firm. Wouldn't describe it as rock hard, but it is firm. 
What I was noticing on the control panel though is it said to turn, press that same button again to turn the air off. And I was noticing that pressing it didn't turn it off. I actually just had to cut the power because I didn't want to overfill it because it warned me of the danger of that. What I haven't yet discovered is whether or not it uh, didn't turn off because it sensed that it wasn't yet full enough or if there's some other issue uh, maybe like the panel not having fully charged yet, but I did cut the power just to be safe because I didn't want to overfill it. Okay, so now that our hot tub is done, the next step is to inflate this thing. This is located inside the folded up cover. It's called a spa cover air bladder. And you see this little valve here. We're going to open that and we're going to fill this up the exact same way that we filled up the hot tub. We're just gonna kind of connect that right there. All right, we're all done. I again noticed that the air button did not work to turn the thing off, so I again had to cut the power. So I'm still a little unclear as to whether I'm doing something wrong or if there's something wrong with the unit. Uh, it's just a little confusing because that's what the manual says to do. But anyway, this thing is nicely inflated and as you see, it works pretty quickly. So now the next step is to connect the control unit. That's this thing. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this air hose. We don't need it now. I'm going to relatch that and relatch that. But as you see here, we've got one connector, two and three. Those line up with one, two, and three right here. So there aren't hoses that go between these. I'm just gonna set this up against it and connect each of these three. So I'm gonna do that now in kind of fast time so you can kind of check it out briefly. And I'm gonna move the camera so you get a little better view. I'm gonna take these caps off of all three and we'll set those aside. It is obviously important to line these up correctly. This first one is rigid. That one is flexible. This one has some amount of flexibility. This first big one, this tube goes inside of this one. I'm gonna kind of push it up there. Now I can just kind of snug this union fitting on there. I'm not gonna use pliers to connect these. I'm just gonna kind of snug them up with my hands. But I am gonna get them as tight as I can get them with my hands. Last one, of course, is the most challenging because the other two have already been snugged up. What I may do is loosen the other two until I get that one in there just a little bit. And then I'll tighten all three back. Anyway, I'm gonna connect this top one first, I think. All right, top one's connected. I haven't snugged it up yet, but it is connected. I'm going to do this bottom one here and kind of get that one lined up. I'm going to get all three going before I tighten any of them fully. All right. All right. The bottom two are snug and that one is snug. Now I could have edited all of that out and made it look like I'm a genius, but I kind of wanted you to see some of the issues I run into just in case you run into them also and then what I do to fix it. The next step is to install the two filter cartridges that come with the hot tub. Those look like this right here. There's two of them exactly the same. They're designed to go inside the hot tub. So there's one valve here and one just like it over there. They both have a big letter C right there. There's threads on the back of this and threads right here. So I'm literally just going to put that there and hand snug it up. Same thing on this side. That's it. Okay, the next step is just to fill it up. And I'm just gonna do that with a garden hose. I happen to have a hose right here and a nearby spigot. I am gonna get a little bit of this debris out of the, the tub that I tracked in when I was installing the filters. Knowing what I know now, I probably would reach over the side and install those rather than step into it like I did. But let's turn the water on, fill this thing up, this is probably going to take at least an hour, so we'll be back. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do while I'm waiting for this thing to fill up is install this. This is a light and it screws right into the side there, but first I have to open this little hatch and put the batteries in. It's a waterproof hatch and inside is this little battery compartment like that. 
that takes three AAA batteries. I'm going to put those in right now. I'm going to go ahead and leave the light off, but I'm going to screw it into the side here. Just like that. The next thing I'm going to do are install the two headrests that came with it. I'm not exactly sure yet where I'm going to really want them. It has this little bracket here that's kind of spring-loaded, and then these holes here, which is what the back of the headrest attaches to like that. So obviously, we know we want the holes on this spring to be on the inside of the hot tub, kind of like that. And then we simply attach. Let's see how easy this is. I'm going to press in and down. It may be easier to attach it to the bracket first. Let's find out. Yes, it probably is easier to attach it to the bracket first and then like that. And it's easily movable in case you don't want it in that same position. There's two of those that go on exactly the same. So as I think you can see, the water is a little over a third of the way full. It's definitely over the filters, which is what sucks the water in and then sends it to the heater. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the heater on and see how long it takes this thing to get to the right temperature. So we're going to kind of pan the camera over here down to the heater right there. So to turn on the heater, I'm going to press the power button and then I'm going to press that little flame button for heat and then I'm going to bump it to the temperature I want. As you can see, it's right now it's reading the temperature of the water, which was in the 50s. So I'm going to set it to 100. I feel like that's a good average temperature for a hot tub to get to. It's 510 p.m. right now. We're going to see how long this thing takes to reach that temperature. I'm guessing it's going to be overnight at least, but unfortunately for me, it's going to be in the 30s tonight, so it could take even longer. Let's find out. Okay, it's been 36 hours since we first started our inflatable hot tub, and full disclosure, it's not at 100 degrees yet for the water temperature. It's only about 89, but it hasn't gotten above 36 degrees Fahrenheit here in Central Texas the entire time. We had snow yesterday, and yet the inflatable hot tub still kept going up. And remember, inflatable hot tubs are never designed to operate effectively when the outside weather temperature is under 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think it's doing pretty good. It's going up about a degree an hour. So at this rate, it should hit 100 degrees sometime this afternoon. I think the weather here today is going to cooperate and go well into the 40s or maybe even the 50s. So that's going to help speed that process up too. But of course, if you live somewhere where it doesn't usually get below 40 degrees, this thing's going to be great all year round and if you do have harsh brutal winters you can just put this thing away for the winter time i still think it's an excellent outstanding hot tub it's about 700 bucks on amazon remember i'll link to it down below in the description if you decide you want to check that out got outstanding reviews it's a great hot tub especially for those of us who don't have thousands of dollars laying around to buy a more portable hot tub uh, not, and not that they're really portable, but that's what they call them, the hard-sided hot tubs. Anyway, I hope this video helps you. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. It sends a great signal to YouTube, and then they show it to more people just like you. And then, of course, smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button, too. That way you get notified of the next video I put out. But with that, I'll see you in the next video.